Tuberculosis is the topic for uh, this video and tuberculosis is actually a very common uh, worldwide infection and uh, let's get started basically it is an infection of the lung and it is uh, very commonly associated with hemoptysis which is coughing up blood and uh, the treatment is actually involves multi uh, drugs um, as many as four for a long period of time six to twelve months and there's a lot of uh, screening uh, um, tests done worldwide and we'll talk about that as well so quite a bit to cover so why does this happen what is the cause or etiology well tuberculosis is basically caused by a organism known as mycobacterium tuberculosis that's the name of the organism and human beings are the main reservoir for this uh, uh, organism and it's actually spread it's an airborne illness meaning it's spread by uh, air and a person will get it by an inhalation inhalation of these particles that contain this mycobacterium tuberculosis now how do these particles get into the air well they get into the air when somebody who has TB uh, TB uh, is my uh, short form for tuberculosis so not just my short form but it is the short form when a person with TB coughs or has any kind of uh, forced expiration the mycobacterium particles get into the air and when those are inhaled by somebody else they can be infected with uh, this disease so really quickly on epidemiology uh, 15 million people at any given time worldwide have active tuberculosis so it's actually very prevalent and uh, as much as one-third of the world one-third of the world's population um, is infected without active disease. So the uh, infection actually goes through a couple sta stages. You have first the primary infection and then you have active disease. Now when somebody gets the primary infection um, it basically typically does not result in infection um, but it can spread to other parts of the body and not just the lungs it can spread to the bones it can also spread to the meninges just as an aside TB of the spine is known as POTS disease POTS disease and that's a commonly tested uh, exam item just wanted to mention that so person can be infected without having the active disease now if the patient does have the active disease then definitely uh, this will take on a whole new uh, uh, category in terms of symptoms and signs and that's when you get this symptoms of tuberculosis so what are the symptoms of tuberculosis well there's some pretty vague ones the um, individually each of these symptoms are not really diagnostic because they're so common in in, in many other um, medical conditions but um, the key one in my opinion is really this one because that kind of told, anytime you have blood in anything whether it's coughing up blood or vomiting blood or urinating blood or blood in your stool blood is always a pretty serious sign initially the cough will be productive probably yellow or green sputum but then it will lead to hemoptysis now another thing of course uh, is if you have a risk of exposure if you've been exposed to someone who had TB that's obviously a pretty important uh, fact another thing that's very uh, uh, concerning is uh, night sweats 
And these night sweats are pretty uh, impressive. They're actually known as drenching night sweats, where you wake up in the middle of the night just soaked in sweat. So these are some of the uh, uh, symptoms. I put in fever in there as well, even though fever can happen in a long list of things. It, it can happen, of course, in, in uh, tuberculosis as well. So how do you diagnose if somebody does have these symptoms and perhaps they even told you that yes I did have exposure to somebody who had tuberculosis then how would you diagnose this? Well the main uh, first imaging test is of course the chest x-ray and then after that you would test the sputum and then involved in, in, in the testing is um, a skin test it's uh, also known as a PPD uh, purified protein derivative is what this stands for. I'll talk a little bit about that. So let's talk about these diagnostic tests. Well the chest x-ray basically is um, looking for the uh, infiltrate. It's a very characteristic a aspect of active TB and the infiltrate will definitely suggest that there is active TB. The sputum is tested with a culture and this is probably the most important uh, test um, and that is you have to examine the sputum and check for something called acid fast bacilli and this is without a doubt the most important test in tuberculosis most specific test and the acid fast bacilli or the presence of it is a pretty key diagnostic factor in this disease. The skin test is uh, rather interesting. Many uh, of you probably have even had this already where you place a small 1 ml amount of solution into the patient's arm and this area will eventually form a wheel, a localized skin reaction. And the diameter of that wheel is measured. And the diameter indicates whether or not the patient has uh, tuberculosis. It's known as a positive PPD or positive reaction. So how, how big does this, the diameter have to be? Well, there's three categories. There's people with no risk factors, there's people with some risk factors, and there's people with high risk, fast, high risk factors. If someone has no risk factors, just the general population, the PPD, or the, the diameter of that wheel, is the diameter of the um, in duration or this the localized skin reaction to the injection has to be greater than 15 ml millimeters if the patient has some uh, risk factors for example they're a recent immigrant from a high prevalent area or they live in a population that has close proximity to people who might be infected like prison or homeless shelter then the ppd should be greater than 10 and if the person has high risk factors, in particular people who are HIV, fact, HIV positive, the PPD needs to be greater than 5. Um, so this, these uh, diameter readings are what's known as a positive reaction to the PPD. Uh, TB is usually curative. Is curative. Um, but about 10% uh, of the cases are fatal if not if, if the proper treatment isn't um, initiated so what is the treatment well the treatment of tuberculosis is uh, involves uh, multi uh, line there's four medications in particular there's isoniazide there's rifampin, there's ethambutol, and there's pyrazinamide. 
On licensing exams, they um, actually test the side effects of these more than they actually test the actual drug, I've noticed. So let's talk a little bit about each of these. Isoniazide is um, uh, the mainstay of tuberculosis treatment. It's also given for um, uh, people who have a latent TB, meaning they don't have active tuberculosis yet. So the side effects that they test on the licensing exam, the way I remember it, isoniazide is abbreviated INH. Now, the way I remember it is that INH, you can kind of remember it as injures neurons and hepatocytes. And we're talking, of course, about the side effects. So what does that actually mean? Well, it injures hepatocytes. What we mean by that is one of the side effects of INH is that it can cause hepatitis. And it injures neurons. What you mean by that is that it can cause peripheral neuropathy. And the reason is because it can cause a deficiency of vitamin B6. And vitamin B6 is also known as paradoxine. So oftentimes when INH is given, it's given with vitamin B6 to prevent that side effect. Okay, now rifampin, another tuberculosis medication. So what's the side effect that they test on the licensing exams? Well, this one is an easy one to remember. It causes orange urine orange body secretions um, which is one of the main side effects. Ethambutol, very commonly tested side effect is that it causes optic neuritis. The patient will have an inability to distinguish between colors such as blue and green. And uh, pyrazinamide is another bactericidal drug used in the treatment of tuberculosis. I want to talk about screening Screening is important. When someone has uh, close contact with a person who had active TB, that person uh, should be uh, tested, or uh, screened rather. And you do it with the PPD skin test. And if the person's PPD is positive, then they should have a chest x-ray. And um, also, of course, they should have their sputum tested sputum culture and then if the person is indeed have uh, active TB after you've done these tests then the treatment um, will of course involve those four medications multi-drug treatment but sometimes a person can have uh, latent tuberculosis and not have active disease in fact, many, many people have that. So what do you do then? Well, the, the, the treatment of latent tuberculosis um, is generally consists of isoniazide, that medication I mentioned earlier, uh, for about 9 to 12 months. And then finally, one last point is the prevention of t TB. And it's a vaccine that many many of you have probably even gotten it's called the BCG vaccine and it's currently given to over 80 percent of the world's world's children uh, so it's definitely very very widespread uh, I finish up with a, a few clinical vignettes you care for a family that consists of a 43 year old husband 42 year old wife 15 year old daughter and 12 year old son each family member is healthy the 77 year old maternal grandmother lived with the family until four weeks ago when she died suddenly after a prolonged respiratory illness autopsy revealed that she had active pulmonary tuberculosis at the time of her death the organisms tested sensitive to all commonly used anti-tb drugs in the following and following up on the grandmother's illness, the most appropriate first step in managing this family is to... Now, this entire family has been exposed to the grandmother, obviously, who had active TB. So, as close contacts, they are at risk for transmission of TB. So, the appropriate screening test, as we mentioned earlier, is the skin test, which is the PPD.
which is right here. Uh, complete workup, next question. Complete workup of each family member reveals no evidence of tuberculosis. The most appropriate next step is to. Now, a negative PPD, which is what, what, what happened, uh, indicates that there's no TB, there's no latent TB, and there's no active TB. So therefore, there's no indication for any treatment. So medications. And then finally, the father mentions that his mother-in-law spent many hours with a nephew in the weeks prior to her death. This nephew is 26 years old, has lymphoma, and recently completed a course of chemo. You agree to see the nephew as part of a thorough exam you place a PPD. The PPD test is positive. Then complete evaluation of the nephew reveals no evidence of active tuberculosis. The most appropriate pharmacotherapy is. Well, this question indicates that this 26-year-old nephew has a positive PPD, but he does not have any active TB. So that clearly uh, shows that he doesn't need the multi-line drug, you know, all this stuff that they're talking about. But because he does have uh, latent TB, he will need isoniazide, also known as INH, uh, for about 9 to 12 months. So the answer to this question is A.